Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, this is Sydney Armendariz from the California Workforce Development Board. And I am here to present the um, presentation on the Automated Rehabilitative Catalog and Information Discovery Machine, also known as Arcade, um, with our partners from the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. So um, we will go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, my name is Sydney Armendariz. I am the Corrections Workforce Partnership Manager here at the State Board. Um, I'm joined here with my team, I'm Joe Flores, who's our research analyst, and also Travis Baker, who is our research specialist um, as well. And then I'm also joined uh, with uh, Corrections, um, the arcade team, and also some folks from um, our Division of Adult Parole Operations. Um, so I will introduce them a little bit later. So today um, I will go through some housekeeping, um, just logistics for the YouTube and how to submit questions. I'll also give a brief prison to employment initiative update, and then we will get into the RK demonstration. And then of course, we'll leave some time at the end for questions and answers. So just for some quick housekeeping, uh, Joe Flores will be monitoring the YouTube chat box and also the reentry email inbox for audience questions to send to the presenters during the presentation. Um, so please send your questions, comments, or if you'd like to be added to our P2E contact list, you can email uh, reentry at cwdb.ca.gov or you can also type it into the YouTube chat box. The YouTube webinar video will automatically co convert to a regular YouTube video, um, so you can access it on our YouTube channel. Um, if you are interested in doing that, uh, you can search for California Workforce Development Board on YouTube and you'll find this webinar recording. So next, um, just to give a brief prison to employment initiative update. So the us here at the state board, I'm um, in partnership with the uh, grant implementation team. We are currently facilitating check-in calls with each region. So hopefully we've had an opportunity to talk to you and your region um, about your P2E projects, see how things are going, especially in light of COVID-19 and also answer any questions that you may have. Um, so if you have not uh, received a scheduled invitation from us, please reach out to me um, and I will work with uh, Cindy Harrington and Angela Mendibles to, um, to schedule that meeting. Also, we've been getting a lot of questions about um, whether or not P2E funding will be will be extended um, due to the current pandemic. Um, right now, there, there hasn't been any talks of extending the funding because it is so far out. Um, the, the funding expires in 2022. So you still have plenty of time to um, restructure your projects if necessary um, or to, to um, use the funding um, to promote your P2E project. So if you have any questions, you can contact either myself or Angela Mendibles. Her email is on the slide um, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. And then also just at a, at a statewide level, at the state board and CDCR are currently working on strategies to relaunch the statewide partnership agreement activities. So a few of you may have uh, may remember that earlier this year we were trying to schedule uh, meet and greets between the local regions and the local correctional facilities in your area. Um, unfortunately, those have been postponed um, indefinitely due to the pandemic, um, and we've also lost our um, contact over at CDCR, Bill Muniz, he has since retired. So we're, we're starting to try to restructure the partnership agreement activities um, and, and try to relaunch some of those activities um, virtually or um, just internally as well. So if you have any questions, again, please reach out to me and um, I'd be happy to, to answer any of those questions. So now the moment you all have been waiting for, um, it's the arcade demonstration. And so I will um, introduce both of our presenters. So Manny Santu is the project manager for the arcade program at the Division of Rehabilitative Programs within CDCR. He took on his responsibilities in November of 2019. And since then he's helped launch the latest iteration of arcade. In addition, his team is actively working on bringing new service providers into the arcade system. 
And before his current role at uh, the Division of Rehabilitative Programs, Manny worked as a teacher in the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District. Next, we'll have Kelly Shaw. Um, she began working for the state last year um, in the Department of, or in the Division of Rehabilitative Programs Portfolio Training Unit. She trains on several of CDCR software products that are utilized within prison institutions and, and community facilities. She also has many years of experience in, in vastly different fields of training from scuba diving instructing to, um, to skills training and also working with children with autism. But she's especially passionate about the arcade program. Um, she believes that since the sole function of Arcade is for the benefit of the end user, it's clear to see that their ease and convenience has been the foremost concern in every design concept. And so hopefully you'll um, see that during this demonstration, you'll see that this is very user friendly and um, CDCR is really wanting to connect with the local boards and local regions to um, upload as many resources for this population into Arcade as possible. So with that, I will turn it over to um, the Arcade team. Okay, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. My name is Manny Sandu, and I am the project manager for the arcade program at DRP. I would like to begin by thanking all of you for joining us today. In this presentation, I will be giving you details about the Automated Rehabilitated Catalog and Information Discovery, or arcade system. Originally designed in 2014, the arcade system has gone through a complete redesign that went live in early 2020. The redesign includes new functionalities, bug fixes, and a renewed focus on the user experience. Currently, Arcade hosts over 177,000 users in counting. Arcade was created to provide our transitioning end users with a user-friendly system to search for community-based resources. The self-guided interface allows users to successfully navigate the Arcade system without guidance, providing the user with the confidence to be self-sufficient in their search to prepare for their reintegration into society. The arcade system is currently available as a self-service kiosk, a desktop, and on mobile devices. Through the, through the use of the URL, an individual can access the arcade system from anywhere with an internet access. At the moment, arcade is being marketed to individuals and institutions, parolees, probationers, and their friends and family. In order to log in to the user interface, a CDCR number and date of birth is required. The arcade system is optimized to search for community-based rehabilitative services and resources such as substance abuse treatment, housing, medical services, veterans affairs, public libraries, and much more. Let's begin with an overall view of the user interface. Arcade is a comprehensive program that delivers information in an easily accessible format to the end user in order to help them reintegrate into their communities. Users can select a nearby community resource from the category of their choice and view and print contact information from their selections. So here is the Arcade user interface homepage. After clicking Get Started, you choose your language, accept the terms and conditions, and now we're at the login page. Here, a user would put in their CDCR number and date of birth. In this case, I'm going to use a generic login. The first thing you have to do is choose your location. Arcade is a location-based system. You can choose a parole or probation office or type in an address. In this case, I'm going to use 1600 K Street, which is the DRP headquarters. Now we use this address. Now we come to the main screen. 
For instance, let's say I want to look up a food bank. In this case, I would click community resources, everyday needs, and food bank. This gives me a list of food banks from closest to farthest from my location, which is 1600 K Street. In addition to community resources, the arcade program also offers access to a library of forms and documents. For example, let's say I want to uh, put in an application for a new social security card. I would go to forms and documents, go to identification, pick my language, and here we have an application for a social security card. At this point, I can either view the PDF or print the document. In this case, I will view the document and I can print it out at this location also. Now, CDCR has also partnered with Monster Government Solutions to offer access to real-time job postings directly through the Arcade program. The job postings are provided through a custom interface with monster.com and jobs.com. So we click on find jobs, personalize job search, and it redirects us to the monster.com job search. Here, an individual can search for jobs based upon their job assignment, uh, their, based upon a category, based upon the certifications that they've received while in an institution or based upon keywords. So for certifications, if an, if an individual has received a certification from let's say the American Welding Society, in this case, uh, we'll choose MIG welding. Now you can choose to search by your saved location, by your county or city, zip code, or all of California. In this case, I'll choose all of California. And this gives me jobs that are available to MIG welders in the entire state of California. Along with the internet job search, the arcade user interface also provides a section for service providers to post their own jobs. That is this portion here, service provider jobs. This means any service provider that is in the arcade system can post a job and have exclusive access to a population that is often overlooked by many employers. Another interesting feature is our what's new function. Uh, it will be, it will provide pertinent information directly related to the concerns of our end users including information directly from the secretary's office. Our goal is to provide you with another tool in your toolbox. Arcade is a free service for both users and service providers. Research shows that offenders and offender, offender involvement in rehabilitative programs is critical to reducing the recidivism risk. A significant barrier uh, people often face during the reentry during the reentry service, during reentry is identifying rehabilitative resources. Arcade is designed to help individuals identify those resources that are critical to their successful reentry. In addition, Arcade has been designed with safety and privacy in mind. User sessions are not saved and automatically time out when not in use. Individuals at institutions can send canned emails to service providers but cannot themselves receive emails. Instead, providers are encouraged to send provider packets via the postal service. Another interesting feature is our ability to receive and process feedback. So if I log out of the system, I'm given the option to take a survey. There is a list of survey questions and a dialog box at the bottom to type in comments. So we are constantly looking at feedback. Now, let's show you the other side of the coin. If the arcade user interface is considered the storefront, the arcade portal 
is considered the back office. For that, I will pass it on to Kelly. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Kelly. Thanks for joining. I'm going to switch screens so your screen may go blank for just one second. Okay. Can everybody see my arcade portal screen? Manny, can you give me a yes on that? Yes, I can. Okay, great. I'm going to assume everybody can. Okay, so as Manny told you, the, the back side of Arcade is a different portal. And to register your business, your entity, you'll need to come to the separate portal. And the first thing you'll need to do is request an account. We will click through the steps here. Request one here. And it's a real easy walkthrough. So first thing I just want to point out, if it has a red asterisk, this is a required field. You will need to put in information in order to progress to the next page. So just to keep going, I will make something up. I'll create a password. Account type, for everybody in today's presentation, you will be a service provider. And we'll click Continue. Oh, and you do need to put in a valid email address. OK, so once you submit that and you fill out the rest of the survey, you'll then uh, wait for an email to come to you confirming that your account has been approved. I'm going to go ahead and use my own account for the things that I want to show you today. Once you get that approval email, you'll put in your information here, your email address, and your password, and log in. Of course, if you've forgotten your password, we have a recovery for that. Once you're logged in, what you're looking at now is what we call the dashboard. And as a service provider, this dashboard shows you if you have any jobs that you've posted that are pending approval, and if you have any service content. So every, every submission goes through an approval process, as does every edit to your account. And if you're uh, waiting for approval, that will show there on your dashboard. If you have submitted documents or forms into the system and waiting approval. So this gives you a quick status check of everything that is pending or approved. Here are your jobs posted and any service provider content. And these are the ones that have been approved down here. And to make it real easy, we have a View Walkthrough Help button that will walk you through each of these fields. To begin, you will go to Service Providers. And the last selection here is where you'll build your account. And I want to reassure everybody, you don't need to memorize what I'm telling you because we have step-by-step -step user guides that you can walk each step through. And we also have a help email in case you have questions. So today I'm just going to show you what it looks like and what it can do. So we're going to start with uh, creating a new service provider location. We'll create this location for ourselves. And you can see that we have a status bar up here with four steps to it. Right now we're on step one. We'll enter our information. The county that we're located in. And all the information, um, again, if it's required, it'll have a red asterisk. Company description, this can be a cut and paste from your website. More information is always better. Enter any additional information. Your media packet, if you have a brochure or a trifold, you would upload that here. Your logo would go there. This will, this will show on your provider page on the user interface that Manny just walked you through. And service search keywords. This is very important. The more you enter, the easier it will be for people to find you. So you'll select the ellipsis there and all that apply. So let's say I have several categories. I'm a 501c3, I'm female only, 
and I'm also uh, I'm a stop location. Once I've completed all that, I can proceed. Oh, see, there we go. If it has a red asterisk, it is required. We're on to step two. This is company information. So again, you're just filling out the information that's pertinent to you. Um, more information is always better. If it's the same, we'll click that. We've really tried to make it so that the service providers can provide as much detail during a search to the end user. All of this company contact information here is optional. You could put it in your website, point of contact, phone. So we've put in as many ways for people to reach you as possible. You have the option to list your business hours. Right? If they change by day, you can uh, list each individual one. And I'll just quickly go through this for you. But it's a very comprehensive page. You can add any comments in there. You can keep adding um, day by day. So if your hours are different on a Sunday than the rest of the week, you could add that in. If you have on-call hours, and we'll proceed to the step three. So here's where we can review everything we've entered. If you're not sure what these uh, headings mean, you can click on more information. So we've really tried to make this very user-friendly to build your page. Okay, so now I'm reviewing the information I've put in. I can edit each section. I could add more details at this point. All right, and now I'm ready to submit this page. This is what it's going to look like. Had I left, uploaded my logo, all of that would appear here. You want to include managed services because this is another opportunity for you to list more of your organization's services. And again, more information is always better. So I have options here. I can choose all of the services. I'm going to scroll quickly to show you that there are several options. All right, so we've pretty much tried to cover everything for you. When you select them, let's say my, my company offers AA or NA services, and that will click through in just one second. Okay, I also want to select if um, the parole or probation columns apply. Are my services free? Yes, they are. And I did select that I was a female-only organization, so I want to reiterate that. And I'll come down and I'll choose all the services that my organization offers. Because remember on the user interface side, they can search by keywords. All right, we'll say we also offer child care. So once I've selected everything that applies, I'm going to set it. Scroll to the bottom, save my changes. I can see here a recap of everything that I've checked, make sure it's everything that I want. Do one final check, make sure everything looks exactly how I want it to be published. And then I can click Submit for Review. Once I click Submit for Review, or once you do, you'll then um, receive an email back confirming that your page has been approved, that you are a service provider and you are now listed in Arcade. You will have the ability from your dashboard to edit your page 
You can make changes. We leave it up to the service provider to keep their page current. If you have changes, you can make that. But remember, every edit requires approval. So there will be up to a three-day delay in approval. Manny mentioned that service providers have the ability to post jobs specific to our, our community. And it's an easy um, click-through process again. Just like, just like configuring your own page, posting the jobs would be the same. It would be down here at Manage Jobs. And then back on your dashboard, you could see the status of everything. So you can see here that what I just submitted is pending approval. And had I posted a job, it would be down here in Jobs Pending Approval. Again, we have step-by-step -step user guides, and we have the help available online through email if you need. But that is, is, that's how easy it is to create your page. And then you're available to everybody that searches for you by name, by keyword, or by a category. And that's the end of the portal side of it. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Sydney. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kelly. So let me um, go ahead and share my screen. Give me one second. And view. Awesome. So thank you so much, Kelly and Manny, for that um, awesome and informative presentation. So now we will go ahead. Um, I'll go ahead and, and turn it over to um, Nikki Dillon. She is um, one of the managers at the Division of Rehabilitative Programs. Um, Nikki, did you want to go ahead and say um, a couple things before we jump into Q&A? Yes, absolutely. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for participating on this call. Uh, we are so excited um, to be here today and share this wonderful tool with you. And I really want to thank Sydney and her team for giving us the opportunity. We're excited about this tool um, because of the changes that we've made will really give us the opportunity to expand the number of providers in this tool. Um, and so really looking forward to working with you all um, to get you in our system and, and help us get the outreach um, of this tool out into the community and looking forward um, to hearing your feedback on, on ways that we can improve. So um, thank you all again. I do want to thank our, our K team, which is led by Kevin Wartell. Um, and um, again, thank you. Looking forward to hearing your feedback. Great, thank you so much, Nikki. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into questions. We have um, a couple questions coming in already. So one person asked, how do service providers access resources in Arcade? Uh, Manny or Kelly, can you talk about um, how someone would go about accessing the resources um, if they are providing services? Yeah, so when a service provider account is created, uh, the system automatically generates a, uh, a login for the Arcade UI. So upon request, we can send you that information and you can log into the user interface and uh, see everything that's uh, available. Great, thank you. And next question, um, if you already have a page on Arcade, how can I get access, how can we get access to correct it? So if you have your information in the Arcade system right now, what we want you to do is create a service provider account, and we will link your service provider account with your, the service provider information you already have in the Arcade system. This way, you could go in and then make edits. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Next question. Is there a service category for help with court relief, like expungements and certificates of rehabilitation? If not, how would someone input that information? So at this point, I don't believe there is uh, any information regarding uh, expungements and uh, certificates of rehabilitation. Uh, what what uh, Arcade provides is uh, services in your given area. So it's a, it's a tool to access uh, services and uh, businesses that uh, someone who has been incarcerated for a long time 
uh, would be unfamiliar with. So okay. Manny, good morning, everyone. This is Kevin Wartell as well uh, from DRP. Thank you again for joining today. I would like to expand on that because this was a question that came up in some of the original Q&A about adding other areas um, into the system that we currently don't have in there. Um, in the front end demonstration that Manny walked through, one of the areas that we didn't really touch on today is an area called forms and documents. And within the forms and documents section, there's a lot of key literature and information like how to file for medical benefits and uh, how to file for social security, your social security card, um, things of that nature. This type of information on expungement would be a perfect document um, that we could work with anyone within your area. If there wasn't particular one that was more statewide focused that would be relevant to any of the end users, we'd be happy to take that information and add that in um, as additional information into the forms and documents area. So the one thing I did want to specify about Arcade in general is we're growing. This is not a system that is at its end and we say, hey, we're done, we're at the finish line. This is a constantly evolving system. It's conversations like today with partners such as yourselves where these types of things come up where we go, hey, we wouldn't have known what we didn't know. So this is great information to learn upon. We'd be happy to take that. Um, and then upon review, get it uploaded into the system for the end user uh, access. Great, thank you so much, um, both Kevin and Manny. So the next question is, is the arcade system just for use by people in the state prison system or can incarcerated individuals in county jails access these resources as well? So in order to access the arcade system, you have to be in the CDCR system. You have to have a CDCR number. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let me go to the um, chat box and see if there's anything else. Okay. And um, please continue to send in your questions to um, either the YouTube chat box or to the re-entry inbox. Um, and we are definitely happy to answer them. We still have some time. Um, let's see, I'm going to put uh, the Division of Adult Parole Operations on the spot. Um, I know this webinar is about Arcade, but we did, we did receive a lot of questions in response to this webinar invitation about um, parole and the parole referrals. So we have um, Ryan Yahtzee on the line. Ryan, can you talk um, about the parole agent referrals and how someone can go about contacting their local parole office and if there are any updates on the parole referral system as well? Yeah, good afternoon. Can you can you hear me okay, Sydney? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, great. So thank you for having me on this, this afternoon and uh, thank you DRP team. It was a great presentation. I appreciate getting the updated uh, information on the arcade system. Um, so as Sydney mentioned, the Division of Adult Parole Operations and the California Workforce Development Board um, <clears throat> work together with a number of other partners in the community and probably some of you on this uh, on this uh, call right now. And what we've done is we've developed an ability for any of uh, anyone who is on parole um, for them to get referrals from their agent of record, their parole agent to a local American Job Center of California. And so how that works is if once they're, once, once they're released from incarceration in one of our state institutions or one of our programs, um, they're able to basically ask their agent to refer them and once they're work ready and they're working with their agent on that um, to get referral um, directly to the American Job Center um, within their geographical location. And so we've been able to program our one of our systems that parole uses, it's, we call it Pivots, and it's a, it's an application that our agents only have access to and they can they can provide those referrals. So that was that was one of our major hurdles was getting them into our system. The second piece was um, creating partnerships with, between our parole administrators and our supervisors and our agents and the workforce develop the local workforce development boards all across the state and um, with Sydney and, and Joe and other all the other folks on this call working together for a long time we were able to create some good partnerships with you folks out there some, and basically the ability to <clears throat> work together to solve some issues. One of the things we've noticed with COVID is there's um, 
there's a lot more resources available out there. And we have, um, I think, you know, obviously with COVID concerns, um, you know, we're, we're still working with our pro populations to um, get them into those, those services and into those job centers. I think a lot of the focus right now is, is upon, um, uh, there's Medi-Cal enrollments, there's uh, unemployment, insurance and there's uh, other other needs that we, we've been working on as well so we have noticed a, a slight dip in referrals for the for now we are hoping that as we um, relaunch in in, in in so many words to this prison to employment efforts that we can continue to spread the message out and continue this referral process um, and even and develop it further along with um, our partners you know statewide so um, if anybody has any specific questions about that, I'm more than happy to answer them, but that's kind of the, the Division of Adult Pro-Operations um, AJCC referral process in a nutshell. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, and thank you for letting me put you on the spot. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we address parole um, referrals and, and the parole process um, since since we started the referral process right before COVID um, and now we're in the midst of the pandemic. So I know we have been getting a ton of questions about that. Um, so switching gears back to Arcade, we're getting a few more questions um, about the system. So one person asked, how long will it take from the time of sign up to the email for creating your account? So once you uh, sign up for an account, uh, we generally have uh, three business days to approve the account, uh, but it's been a lot faster than that. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, three business days, but generally within a day, you'll find out. Great. And um, another question, will all um, incarcerated individuals um, at CDCR receive education about the arcade system before they leave prison? Can you talk about how um, incarcerated individuals learn about the resources that Arcade has to offer? This is a great question. Um, first of all, we uh, were actively talking to uh, CC3s uh, and educating them about the arcade program. Uh, we're also currently working on an advertising campaign uh, with uh, posters and a, and a commercial on uh, DRP uh, TV. Great, thank you. And for the folks um, out there, can you um, elaborate on what a CC3 is? Is a correctional counselor. Perfect. And, and Sydney, this is Kevin again. I'd like to just add a little more information on this as well. Um, Arcade as the kiosk, physical kiosk is located in 13 institute yards, but the desktop version is available at each institution and is available um, for access and use in the libraries and also through our transitions course, which is offered statewide. And so I always get concerned when we hear the word all inmates uh, to be educated about Arcade. It is our hope that through going through these transitional uh, through the transitions program or to go through the library um, in addition to our updated or our soon to be uh, marketing campaign where we're really going to start doing some mass media um, that there will be a good saturation of um, information for those who are incarcerated to be familiar with the arcade system so yes it is a goal but trying to get the word all that's a that's a, a tough meet but that is our goal to make sure that everyone walks away knowing when they leave that this is something that they can access when they do get out, either again at a kiosk in a parole unit that where they're available um, over on desktop format with the email or with the uh, web link address or through their phone. Perfect, thank you so much um, for clarifying that as well. Um, so another question, this is a really good question. Um, someone asked, if I have a group of 30 to 50 organizations that work in reentry um, in their county, if they have the, the, that large group of people um, join a meeting, is there a way to have a personal presentation by one of you so all their questions could be answered? So if you can kind of talk about how um, you can do, if you can do demonstrations, um, if you can meet with the local organizations, that'd be great. Absolutely, we can. Uh, Kelly, I know you're part of the training team. Maybe you can expand on this. Well, it sounds like we might have lost Kelly for oh, the moment. Sorry. This is Kevin again. I Yes, so the, the large scale answer is 
Absolutely. Um, we can make ourselves available. We have a full scale training team that is very versed in arcade. One of the notes that I made sure to share by the end of the presentation is that we can definitely stand up select trainings with more detail, especially on the front end. What you saw today was just a small portion of what's available on that front end for the end user. I think it's really important that each of you get a chance to kind of walk through the system. I believe we actually sent out the uh, information early on where you could kind of just jump around the system and check things out. But yes, if you want something more intensive, we can set it up 30 to 50 to just if you had a few folks that were interested. And I hope by the end of today, either Two of our other DRP reps who are on the call, uh, Ev DaCosta and uh, Jeff Hammond. Oh, and forgive me, Diana Cervantes is also on the call. One of them can make sure we get the arcade inbox email address. I believe it's available somewhere uh, today. We can make sure we get that out to you. Hit us up and we'd be happy to give you as much training as necessary on the system. Great. Um, so next question is, um, since service providers need to update their own information, what stops um, staff or an agency from updating profiles the service provider already updated? For example, multiple staff persons creating multiple profiles for one agency. So if you can talk about if there are um, kind of any quality controls put into place um, to prevent you know, multiple people working at the same organization to keep updating um, the same profile or to keep creating duplicative profiles in Arcade? So what we do is for every location, we'll have one account. Uh, that way, that location will be able to put in their information through that one account. That is then uh, go through an approval process on our side. Uh, we work with our uh, friends at uh, DAPO uh, to do that, to verify any changes. Uh, so what we recommend is that uh, every, every location uh, have their own person in charge of updating uh, their service provider information rather than giving their uh, login to multiple people. But I think, again, this is Kevin, to expand on that, we also have an internal check and balance. Manny would be able, anybody in the group that receives uh, a new entry into the system that wants to be added, where we can validate and verify whether or not they already have something in the system. And we can either accept as a dual or we can reject that particular request. So we do have that functionality. And then to expand one more thing that uh, Manny just referenced about our uh, partnership with parole, one of the key areas that's really critical in this system is access to substance use disorder services. And so we have worked with uh, some of the parole staff to make sure that as an extra check and balance that we just don't unilaterally take a substance use disorder service request and accept it into the system. We like to work with our partners, make sure that they're familiar with this particular entity, that, it, that the group has got a good reputation, that they um, have served our clients hopefully in the past and, and or um, are already kind of a staple within the area. It's just an extra check and balance to make sure that we're not just randomly from DRPs and accepting any and all thing that uh, entities that come into the, that request access to our aid. Yes, thank you. And thank you for pointing out um, the, the resources for substance use disorder treatment um, and also mental health. I know that's a um, really sticky subject for the local boards and the um, job centers because they often don't have those services in-house, so it does require a referral. Um, so I have received questions um, in the past about how does CDCR kind of facilitate um, those types of services for individuals being released. So thank you for um, mentioning that. And then also I want to point out um, in the YouTube chat, uh, Brant Cho, he's the deputy director of the Division of Rehabilitative Programs. He um, also posted that the arcade system will ultimately be available um, on all uh, incarcerated individuals' desktops and handheld devices. Um, and that goes above and beyond the libraries and the transition classrooms. So there, there are plans to make this um, even more widely available to incarcerated individuals um, in the future. Um, so we did get another question. Can we get a report of all providers in our area to make sure all service providers are in? 
I'm assuming they mean art and arcade. So right now we are working on our reporting capabilities. Uh, that is something that we will be able to pull uh, in the near future. Um, is this in particular, uh, just for clarification, are, are they asking about just uh, other service providers in their area? Um, I'm assuming they're they're talking about um, just getting a report for all uh, service providers in their area to make sure that, you know, before they, they create a duplicative profile or page for that service service provider, making sure that they're already in there. So that's something that we can actually uh, physically check ourselves also. Uh, we can check uh, using the portal and someone can check using the uh, user interface. Uh, so it is uh, something that is uh, uh, easily searchable. So this is Kevin to add on to that. I would just say that if there's a particular group that's wanting to do a check and balance on what might be in their respective area, to work through the arcade support inbox, we can assign that out to somebody who might be able to do kind of a back end search and see what's available. Um, I would also say one of the things today is this is really an opportunity. Hopefully, everybody's, you know, kind of juices are flowing on this and saying, hey, I think this is a great opportunity for us to add our information in there. And or I know a lot of folks in the industry that could really benefit from being in this system. Um, we're hoping that this creates uh, an opportunity to receive additional service providers from your respective areas um, and that we can have a chance to partner more deeply with each of you at an individual level. Um, and so we have a, another staff, an area that deals with accepting, you know, the file formatting on how we would be able to upload new service providers into our system. It doesn't have to be a manual um, entry. For the survivor, if you want to get into the provider portal, yes. If you want to be able to maneuver and change your own system and your own information, yes, you do need to sign up for the portal. But if you had a list of providers that you're simply interested in wanting to get into our system, we can definitely connect. I know Jeff Hammond's on the line. We can certainly connect with his team to work on getting a data extract from you and uploading it into the system. As an example, uh, Alameda County uh, Probation sent us their entire list of services for probationers and we we're able to successfully put that into our system so that's just one opportunity hi this is joe from the p2e team due to the delay between zoom and youtube uh i posted in the zoom chat box the follow-up from the original person who asked the question so the the follow-up uh, response was yes we're the workforce board overseeing the funding we just want to make sure that all of our service providers are in there so due to the delay i just wanted to clarify that to our panel thank you joe Okay, and um, next question. Um, have you partnered with the Department of Rehabilitation in any way yet? And how do you see us partnering together? Um, so actually, I can, I can take that question, um, just broadly speaking. So we did incorporate the Department of Rehabilitation in our statewide partnership agreement um, between CDCR, the State Workforce Board, California Prison Industry, um, and now also the Department of Rehabilitation. So right before COVID hit, uh, we were talking about how to best integrate the services that DOR offers um, for folks that have um, disabilities to find employment. Um, as I'm sure all of us are aware, um, there is a large portion of the uh, correctional population that has some sort of a disability. And so at the state level, we thought that that would be a really good opportunity for us to partner with DOR. So um, of course, now that we're in the midst of the pandemic um, and there have been some internal restructures um, on both the state board side and also CDCR, those work group meetings have since been postponed. Um, that's a part of our relaunch effort to um, kind of restart the statewide partnership um, within the next couple of weeks. So more to come on the statewide partnership between um, DOR, the state board and CDCR. Um, but if folks at Arcade or um, DRP in general, if you all can talk about if you have any um, partnerships with the Department of Real Rehabilitation um, and how um, those partnerships work at the local level, that'd be great. Well, this is Kevin um, Hortel again. We have not, from the arcade project, had any direct conversations uh, with the Department of Rehabilitation. There may have been some other conversations ongoing. Um, 
I know that uh, in talking with our director, um, there has been an ongoing dialogue with the Department of Rehabilitation, and that's just to make sure being set up the rehabilitative programs are adequately preparing folks for reentry. Um, to what extent that dialogue is ongoing um, or the frequency of it, I'm not familiar with, but I do know that the department is in conversation with them. Great, thank you, Kevin. And is there a way for, um, I'm assuming there's a way for the Department of Rehabilitation, especially their local offices to create pages in RK that um, highlight their services, correct? So a DOR representative wanted to go in and create a page, they're able to do so. Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so I do wanna be mindful of time. Um, if you have any other questions, please put them in the YouTube chat box or send them to the reentry email inbox so we can uh, make sure we answer them before, um, before our time here ends. Um, let's see. So I also wanted to just um, ask this question broadly. This came in on one of the uh, Q&As that we, we um, received prior to today. Um, so can you talk about who has access to Arcade in a broad sense? Uh, excuse me, in a broad sense. Um, I know you mentioned you know, where the kiosks are and things like that, but if you can also talk about the, um, the ability to access them on smartphones, the machines and parole offices, um, where else can folks get access to Arcade? Yeah, so with the, uh, with the URL, uh, you can have access to the Arcade uh, user interface and the portal for that matter, um, anywhere you have an internet connection. So that could be from a desktop computer, uh, it could be from a smartphone um, and we do have kiosks at uh, at a parole offices and at select institutions. So uh, the uh, short answer is that anywhere with an internet connection. Great, thank you. And where are those kiosks located um, inside of the facility? Are they just in the general common areas or is there like a specific place that, that an individual would have to go to and in order to access the kiosk? So in institutions, uh, they were, uh, specific sites were selected uh, based on uh, security concerns, based upon um, how uh, available they would be. So uh, there isn't any general location where they are in every, at every select institution. It's uh, based upon that particular institution. Great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and Sydney, this is Kevin. I would just say, yeah, to piggyback off of Manny, it's really any common area is really where they're set up. Um, many of them are nearby the libraries, either in or around, either in the library or outside of it, but that's not for each of them. And really, we're trying to move away from the kiosks at some point. Um, we really feel technology has been really working. We've been working really well with the IT partners that we have within the department. And I think we really want to, like we've mentioned previously, our goal is to get them onto tablets um, and into the hands of the, uh, the folks that are incarcerated throughout the system so that they have it literally at their fingertips day in and day out. Um, so we're trying to move away from that um, and really move towards the desktop and the mobile in particular out in the, in the community. I know that was one of the questions asked is during COVID, has there been a problem with accessing our system? And Quite honestly, no, not as long as we've been able to have mobile access. I mean, because again, as Manny's shared, we're internet service away from being able to put in the web link and to, be go, to go out and access the services. It's not something that, oh, the kiosk broke down at the parole unit. We can't, we can't access services today. We can leverage them through desktop or through mobile. Perfect. And then um, what type of, of marketing do you all have um, to kind of advertise arcade services within the institution? Are there posters? Do the correctional counselors uh, mention it to the incarcerated individuals? Can you talk about how someone would become aware of the arcade um, resource? Yeah, so number there's one. a lot of different Sorry. things that we're focusing on um, to market, whether it's through brochures, uh, for the community, DRP TV, which is our live streaming network within the uh, institutions, um, where we can market that as a medium on the television for uh, those that are incarcerated. There's posters. We're getting ready to do a large poster blast. 
there's a mass media we're getting ready to send out for anybody who's currently in the arcade system that has an email address. We're going to do a power blast out to them to get them familiar with um, what that they are in the system and that they can update their information um, regularly. Uh, we've been talking about getting a press release put together. We've developed commercials through our media team. We have a very talented media team here, so we're doing some commercials. Um, so it's just kind of a wide array of media that we're really in mediums that we're trying to focus on um, to really get more awareness. We also want to really target um, friends and family. We think that this is an area that's really missing in this because it's not just available at this point for those who've been incarcerated. We would love to know that someone's mother or brother or family member um, also has the ability to access these services to help a loved one who has been previously incarcerated. So we'll continue to focus our efforts on that as well. Again, we're really in kind of the, the infancy stages as far as marketing is concerned, but the sky's the limit and we continue to move forward with this particular uh, project. Great, thank you. And um, last question before we close, um, I think this is a good uh, way to kind of conclude the presentation. Um, who or, or how should I say, how do um, folks that are interested in creating a page get in contact with you all? Um, what are the steps that they need to take in order to create a page um, so that they can include their local resources? So the first step would be to email the arcade support box at uh, arcade support at cdcr.ca.gov. And we can send you instructions on how to create an account via the portal. And it will also give you instructions on how to enter your service provider information and all the other details you need. Perfect. And so, Sydney, we'll send that out to you if you'd like to pass that out to the folks who are on this uh, call. We'd be happy to give you that information directly. Great, yes, that'd be most helpful. And we did post the um, arcade support email address in the YouTube chat box as well. Um, so folks, if you catch that in the YouTube chat box, make sure you copy and paste that um, and save it so that you have the um, direct email address to the arcade team. Um, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much to the arcade team um, and also to the Division of uh, Adult Parole Operations. Um, we really appreciate you all coming, um, well, I would say coming out if this was um, in person, but sharing your time with us and um, presenting your, your arcade system. Um, I think this has been really helpful for the workforce boards to see that CDCR has resources for um, incarcerated individuals and also folks that are exiting the justice system um, to connect with local and community resources. So I encourage all of our workforce uh, partners and um, service providers, please contact Arcade to create a page um, in the system and get your information out there so that um, folks that are re-entering the society um, post-release can find you and, and get connected to your services as well. So we definitely want to um, promote more of an integrated system between the uh, Department of Corrections and the workforce areas. And this is an awesome tool to be able to do that. So thank you so much, Manny and Kelly and Kevin and Nikki and Brant and Ryan and everybody on the line. Um, and special shout out to my team, um, Joe and Travis. Thank you so much, Joe, for all of your hard work on um, planning this webinar. Um, I really appreciate it. So with that being said, if anyone has any last minute um, burning questions, please go ahead and email the reentry inbox um, and myself and my team will work to um, get you an answer um, as soon as we can. So again, thank you so much. And thank you everyone who joined the presentation as well. Um, with that being said, everybody enjoy the rest of your day. I'll give you back like 30 seconds of your day. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sydney.